So I think the era of Common Core that's coming in is uh, going to make things easier on that uh, area or in that area of you know getting students to read and think like historians and get them more civically involved. I think No Child Left Behind cuffed our hands a little bit in regards to um, you know getting students to to think like that. The the standards based or test based movement. Um, was limiting to any sort of creative thinking. Um, now the Common Core has standards that are, you know, making students do that as part of the um, curriculum, and I think it's great. I, I hope that the assessment piece is is where it is because, you know, if it turns into, uh, you know, a, a standards-based test, multiple choice sort of a thing, then we're going to be back in that area of limiting uh, the student thought. So it's been a challenge, and I've had to, um, you know, sometimes you you. Uh, create some flexibility in the curriculum um, and you know kind of ask for forgiveness later but if you're getting the results at the end of the day uh, then your administrators are more likely to support that uh, you know really cutting-edge civics teaching um, so that the, the more I can get students to either think like historians in my history class or you know to really kind of take part in their government by either giving them roles or um, you know uh, uh, some sort of a uh, a way to think about what's happening in their government that connects to their lives. I, I try to do that the best I can. Um, it's really been neat because I've been, I was recognized as National, Te National History Teacher of the Year because of what I was doing that was cutting edge and innovative. Uh, sometimes it wasn't written in the curriculum, so that was the perfect opportunity for me to, you know, look to my principal and, and uh, say, hey, you know, this, this sort of thing works and it's, uh, you know, we, we've got to, it's sometimes you got to dance around that curriculum a little bit. Um, I've gotten a lot of experiences, like the talk like today. Um, you know, I talk at uh, professional development within the district now that, that my name is out there. And um, I've actually been contacted by some other high schools in the area. And I, everywhere I go, I send the same message, which is we've got to rethink what we're doing here. Uh, we can't just keep going down uh, the same path we were going. It's, it, we can't just teach to that test. We've, we've got to go beyond that. Uh, textbook, test-driven mentality. So anytime I can throw an extra weight behind that movement, uh, it's been terrific. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's what I've been trying to do. And the more opportunities I can get uh, to speak to people who will listen about this, uh, the better it is for me because we really, um, we made a, uh, No Child Left Behind was, was good intentioned, but the execution of it uh, ended up really doing a number on what teachers are doing in the classroom, civics teachers and history teachers alike. To me personally, uh, developing as a teacher, um, there's been a lot that f of professional development done by the Center for Civic Education, um, which is a, an organization here in Illinois, but it's also a national organization. Um, the things that they do with uh, bringing in professionals in to talk about the Constitution, um, you know, half the battle of getting your kids to think outside the box is you've got to know a lot about the material you're teaching. You can't just be in the textbook and expect that to be enough to, to teach your students. And so that's one of the most successful organizations I've been a part of. Also, um, Chicago Metro History Education Center, which is basically a lo local offshoot of the National History Day con contest, also does some great professional development. Um, and so now, you know, th that I've been recognized, I'm kind of a part of professional development rather than taking part in it. And of course, I'm still taking part in it. But, um, you know, anything to get, uh, anything to drive home the use of primary source documents, um, whether that be the Constitution uh, or, you know, the Federalist Papers or anything else. Um, and that, that, the good news is that's in Common Core. I mean, that's the sort of thing that they're asking for. And, and so that's why I'm optimistic about Common Core. That development piece has to be there, though. I mean, we can't, um, you know, the key to this is the students. And if, if teachers don't know their subject matter or aren't confident in their subject matter, then they're not going to be effective in the classroom. And, and that's just a disservice to the kids. So we owe it to them to, to be better in that regard.